Welcome to our session once again. And I think we have gone through the seven churches of Revelation. But uh, before we proceed to the next sections of the book of Revelation, which are a little more complex, it's uh, important for us to understand some of the personal applications that may emerge uh, from these seven churches to our individual lives. The book of Revelation is not a calendar of events so that we can date some things and figure out when one thing is going to happen and another thing is going to take place and so on. The letters to the churches were given because they were going through great tribulation and so many forces were attacking the churches and the Lord wanted every church to be steadfast in the times of trouble and difficulty and he wanted the members of those churches to be fully devoted to him. And these seven churches have were, were selected because the lessons and the challenges that they faced would be basically the challenges that we faced in churches in other parts of the world and throughout the church age in every single denomination and type of church. So they have a universal application. They were not just given as a historical document for us to look at it and reflect on it just for the purpose of knowing some historical facts. The letters to the seven churches have applications for us as churches and as individuals. So before we go into the next sections, it is my intention to reinforce some of the important issues that were prevalent in those churches and review them on a, so that they have personal applications. For example, from the church in Ephesus, we learn that we as followers of Christ can have everything right doctrinally. We can believe all the right things. And even though we may believe all the right things and even know how to discern between true doctrine, false doctrine, test people and doctrines and uh, figure out for ourselves what is precisely right. There can be devotion lacking in our lives. We can be orthodox, right to the last detail, doctrinally, and yet be lacking in devotion and love for our Lord. The Lord wants us to be as diligent as possible as doctrines are concerned. He wants us to be consistent in our beliefs with what the scriptures say, obviously. That goes without saying. At the same time, we need to understand that the walk with the Lord is a love relationship. And that it's possible to get so engaged and busy with so many legitimate things and yet lose our devotion to Christ. So as individual disciples of Christ, we need to prioritize our personal devotion time. We need to spend time with the Lord. Jesus talked about it and he said that you can go into the room and shut the door and speak to your father in secret. I don't think there is any substitute for that. No amount of knowledge of doctrine can substitute for the intimacy, personal relationship, devotion and love that we need to keep on generating in our lives and, and fostering in our relationship with the Lord. 
intimacy with god is of great importance and god expects us to spare no pains in developing our love for him on a daily basis from the church in smyrna a very commendable church we learn that you may be the strongest believer in christ there is one thing that can be guaranteed to all of us who want to diligently follow the lord and that is that we will face pressure tribulation and the lord has promised us that he will be with us in tribulation sometimes we get delivered out of tribulation but there are other times when the lord chooses to just be with us and strengthen us when we are going through the fire and through the flood he has promised that he will be with us and smyrna is a great example of people who were diligent in their faith and they were strong and the lord promised them only more tribulation unfortunately but he promised to be with them he promised to carry them through so that they would see his hand in their lives and i think that is what the lord promises us to we should not be surprised when even people whom we love and care for uh, unexpectedly turn against us uh, because we have decided to follow christ i have decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turn, turning back oh take this whole world and give me jesus no turning back no turning back that's an old chorus that we used to sing and is very true for all of us who wish to be followers of christ and who are the followers of christ god has promised to be with us and we are so grateful that his presence is with us in the midst of all our tribulation and pain and then we learn from the church in pergamos which is also credited with the with having a uh, antipas who was a martyr for christ just like stephen who were the first martyr for christ in the midst of all the pressure that was there uh, the church in pergamos was commended somewhat that they were uh, faithful under pressure but uh, some of them may have compromised their faith and fallen into balamish doctrines been seduced by them but antipas stood firm and it also tells us and shows us that we may have the greatest models exemplary servants of christ those who stand firm around us yet for all despite the fact that we have all these models and examples around us to stir us at the end of the day you have to make your own commitment to christ you have to draw on the strength of the lord and you have to discern for yourself and you have to stand firm and not cave in to the pressures that may come from around you at the end of the day you may have a supporting community around you but nothing will happen unless you make the personal decision to be true and faithful to Christ. So we learn from these three churches. God wants us to have proper doctrine, but he wants us to nurture our devotion. God has not promised that we be free from tribulation and pain because we are followers of Christ. And when we have pressure around us, we must be careful not to cave in and compromise. And we must be careful not to be seduced by wrong doctrines and teachings that will cause our fire to fade and be ineffective in our witness for the lord may god help us to
to consider these things and apply them to our personal lives so that we may please Him in all things and walk with Him to the very end of our lives, not only begin well, but also end well. Let's pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for teaching us through your word. Thank you for the many great examples in our lives like Antipas of old and the people who strengthen us and help us in our walk with you. Give us your grace and strength, Father, to never fall away, never to compromise, always to nurture our devotion with you and to love you with all our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I hope these few words have helped you and strengthened you and given you some inspiration. God bless you and help you in your walk with the Lord. Thank you.